Can you hear me? Oh. Yeah, I can hear you. You can hear me? I can't hear you. Huh. Uh, let me see. Um, I'm gonna, and I've certainly done that before. So anyways, um, so hello everyone. Um, I see a couple of familiar faces. Hi Lisa, hi Taryn, and some and hi Jenna, and maybe some people I don't you know know, but maybe you know Jessica too. I know there's you hey know, guys. Hi. Kind of a, a large uh, inviting group that we have. So um, I, my name is Lauren, and this is Jessica, and we are teaching an essential oils class. We're kind of going to give you our view, some essential oil foundations, but also maybe some of our perspective um, a little bit as nurses and just working in healthcare. Um, and if you have a moment, if you're familiar with Zoom, I feel like so many people are familiar with Zoom, even if they weren't before after <laughs> this last year. But um, if you can just type into the chat um, if you're kind of if you're new to essential oils, if you've been using them for a while or that sort of thing, that'll just kind of help us know like kind of where to spend the most time um, in on the class um, today. And if you want to, you can maybe even type next to that like one thing you kind of want to you're excited to learn or you'd like to know and we can kind of cruise through the comments, you know, as we're chatting and try and, you know, incorporate that into what we're covering. Um, so anyways, and then I'll just kind of keep an eye on the, uh, let's see, the little chat bar. And then in just a moment, I will um, share my screen and we'll actually, I guess I'll do that now. Um, and Jessica, can you see, like, are people, we don't have people waiting. I just, I'm letting people in as okay, we Okay, perfect. Talking. You do that while I'm chatting, then we switch. So, okay, perfect. So, I'm going to share my screen Point. here. Yeah. Um, let's see. Sorry about that. Let's see. It's always the oh you know what I think it's gonna pop. Let's see. Sorry about that. Let's see. I thought we had this all <laughs> set up. Oh my god. Maybe it was playing while we were ch chatting. That's possible. Um okay, perfect. Okay. So um, like I said, this is sort of like a make over your medicine cabinet, the nurses edition. Uh oh, let's see. Okay. So, um, slides are getting away from me here. So, um, I'm just going to introduce myself. So my name is Lauren. Um, I have been a nurse for almost 15 years when I had to do the math to think about that for a second. It was a little humbling. I was starting to think, uh, feel a little old to <laughs> think about, uh, how long I've been a nurse. But I've um, just been a nurse just under 15 years and um, I've worked in a hospital setting that whole time. I've spent a lot of time in um, trauma and ICU and recovery rooms and kind of more of the um, intensive areas. And um, I certainly, um, you know, think that there is a time and a place for Western healthcare and conventional medicine. But I will say after being in the field for, you know, a time, you definitely start to notice um, some areas where maybe things kind of break down or things are not um, as, you know, as an overgeneralization, there can be a tendency to, you know, give a medication to suppress a symptom without looking at a root cause or to sort of um, maybe ignore or not give proper um, 
attention to things like nutrition and toxic load and detox. I think that's like a big glaring area in Western medicine. However, in the setting of you have your leg severed in a car accident. I always say like, I wanted to go to the OR. I want like a lot of anesthesia. Please don't be stingy. Like give me the good drugs. <laughs> you know, I want the, I be generous. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's just sometimes about, you know, using the best tool for the right situation. Just like you probably wouldn't paint your house with a spatula. You wouldn't like try and cook your eggs, <laughs> you know, with a paintbrush kind of thing. So I think sometimes I, I know I'm passionate about talking about this because I feel like um, there, it's not talked about enough um, in the conventional space. So I was first introduced to essential oils um, actually when my daughter, who's now eight, I'm also kind of dating myself now, she was a baby. And I don't know if any of you moms out there have heard of molluscum, um, but it's like this wart um, type skin condition. I hadn't heard of it before. Anyways, I took her to the pediatrician and I was offered a medication and it just gave her side effects and it didn't actually take care of the, um, the skin lesions. And that's when, you know, I always say everyone's got a crazy oil friend. My crazy oil friend offered me a roller bottle and she was like, put this on, you know, on her twice a day. And within a week, they were all shriveled up. And in two weeks, it was like they had never happened. And that was kind of an aha moment for me as a mom that sometimes like, the best option for myself or my family wasn't going to necessarily be offered to me at the pediatrician's office. Sometimes it would be, but sometimes not. And so that kind of uh, opened the door or the, you know, the lid off things to start kind of digging into my options a little bit deeper. Um, and so anyway, since that time, we've like just pretty much completely flipped over our medicine cabinet to a natural medicine cabinet. Um, after I had my son and um, I had to like go out and I did need some ibuprofen. I had to go out and buy some. We hadn't had any in the house in like, you know, six years. So you can really, um, because I felt very comfortable with all the solutions I had at my fingertips. So anyways, we're going to kind of go through some of those things today. And Jessica's going to kind of share her perspective and her story. And then she's going to start us off with kind of how um, uh, some of the us, how to use essential oils and the different ways to do it. And then I'll kind of get into um, some of the specific most popular oils. Um, we'll talk about how you can get oils if you don't have them, um, or if you have them, how to kind of um, use the ones you want or to dive deeper into certain specific areas, whether that be sleep or um, stress or whatever that is. So anyways, uh, Jessica, do you want me to flip the sl slides? Or did I share the screen with you or do you want me just to hit you can go ahead and do it. I'm not sure if I have okay. access to that. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Jessica. And a little bit about myself is I am a wife. I am a mom of two boys. I have a three-year-old, almost three years old, and a, my youngest is one and a half. And I've been a registered nurse for about four years. Um, prior to becoming a nurse, I did work in healthcare for close to nine years. I worked family practice. And so I have a good idea of Western medicine. Um, but a little bit about my um, nursing experience. I worked in acute care for, like I said, almost four years. Um, and it was a small community hospital. I worked in a telemetry slash like DOU, which is like a step down from ICU. So we were um, exposed to so much. Like I learned how to do um, dialysis, per peritoneal dialysis. I worked with patients that were ventilated, um, giving all types of medications, right? Through those modalities. Um, in the hospital, we usually only treat what the patient is coming in for, right? We're there for 12 hours and we kind of just have to focus on that. And that was something for me that I, I did not really like, like I wanted to focus on the whole person, their mental, their emotional, as well as their physical. And I quickly learned that bedside was not for me. Um, so when I had my second son, I decided to take a step back from um, my role as an RN at um, a hospital and just kind of focus on my family. And um, so then at the same time I decided to do that, that's when COVID happened. And I'm just sorry, I'm just letting 
Lauren, can you see when yeah, I'm letting her in? Yeah. Okay, I was just trying to let people in, but um, so when COVID happened and um, I'm losing my train of thought doing that. So um, was a year ago is when I started using essential oils. Uh, and I will say that I started with the wrong company. I am not gonna say the name of the company, but I did and I didn't do my research and I solely got a kit to diffuse in my home to make it smell good. I had no intentions to use essential oils for anything else and to be, real, I was actually very skeptic about using it for medicine or, you know, DIYs, house cleaners. I just did not know better. And so um, having a baby, you know, my oldest son was going through some delays and me just having quit my job and now being a stay at home mom, I was feeling very overwhelmed, all this like anxiety, um, dealing with postpartum still. Um, and someone gifted me balance and wild orange. And that was the first time that I really felt the therapeutic effects of, of essential oils. Um, I remember smelling balance and I'm like, wow, like, and then I kept smelling it and smelling it. And I really realized how it made me feel like it calmed me. And I was hooked ever since then. Um, I started researching and then I, I, I realized that essential oils are really kind of like the it opened the door to this natural way of living to then I started learning about toxins in our home. I threw away all our cleaners, started doing my own, and it has been a complete change since then. Um, and as a nurse, I do recognize that, like Lauren said, there is a time and place for Western medicine, and I'm all for it. I'm grateful that we have both. Um, a lot of times we have to use them in conjunction, you know, to get the, the, the um, relief that we're looking for or the healing that we're looking for. Um, but as a mom, I am so thankful to have these tools that are natural, they're safe, and they're effective. And I have these at my fingertips, you know, I can run to get my oil of peppermint when my son has a fever instead of turning to Tylenol as my first choice, which I have Tylenol in my cupboard, you know, I have it as a backup, but it's really priceless as a mom, I think, to have these tools. And for me, my passion, you know, along with nursing is to really teach people and make them feel empowered to give them the knowledge and empower to take control of their health. And I really, my greatest passion would be to make these oils accessible to everyone, you know, because they're just so good. And I truly believe in them so much. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump in um, kind of our agenda. Um, do you wanna go ahead and switch? Thank you. <laughs> so we're gonna be talking about what are essential oils, how they work, the heartbeat of doTERRA, why doTERRA, right? Um, so what, what are essential oils? And essential oils are highly concentrated and potent oils that are extracted from plants, from flowers, from trees, and they are done by like steam distillation. Some are cold pressed. And, you know, these oils have different properties. They can, they can be antibacterial, analgesics, um, antispasmodics, um, anti-inflammatory, the list goes on. We truly have an oil for everything. I feel we have an oil for that. Um, yeah, I want to go ahead and turn. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go into how they actually work. So when you inhale a pure essential oil, it has to be pure, you know, those molecules go into your nose and it triggers a response in your brain, right? Which is the limbic system. And this is where your long-term memory comes, your behavior, your mood, it even controls like your blood pressure, your breathing. And so I will, I like to like, say like think about like when you walk into a hospital right you kind of get that smell and 
sometimes it triggers some anxiety almost. You feel like your heart is kind of racing a little bit faster. You're breathing a little bit um, faster. But then think about when you walk into a spa or you're at the beach, right? It's so calming. You get that smell. You're relaxed. It's almost like your breath deepens. Um, it's almost like you can feel your blood pressure like dropping, right? That is why essential oils are so powerful and you can have that in your home you know when you diffuse when you put a couple drops in your hand and you smell these oils you can get the same type of reactions in your body you smell lavender you feel calm you know and so these are so powerful and we we'd like to say like one drop of peppermint equals to 28 cups of peppermint tea which it's mind blowing, you know, these are really, really powerful tools that we have access to. Um, so oils are plant medicines. We know that plants have been around for thousands of years. And one thing that I really, really like is that one problem can be addressed by many different oils and one oil can address many different problems. And those are called side benefits. Whereas, you know, when we use a synthetic or over-the-counter medication, those you can experience side effects and we don't want those. Um, so it's great that, you know, something that's natural, our body can process it and oils actually cross our cell membrane where they can work with our bodies to really get to the root of the problem at a cellular level. And that's what's amazing about, you know, these oils. And so those who don't know, um, oils are fast and effective. It takes 22 seconds for the molecules to reach your brain, two minutes for the oils to be found in your bloodstream and 20 minutes to affect every cell in your body. It's amazing. Not oils, not all oils are created equal. And I think one huge thing that sets um, doTERRA apart is their transparency. Um, they created what is called the um, certified therapeutic grade, sorry, certified pure therapeutic grade standard. They vigorously teach, um, sorry, they vigorously test each bottle of oil over 50 times. It's done by a third party of chemists. They test these oils to make sure that they are pure enough to put out in the market for us to use. Um, the scary thing is that there is no FDA regulation on essential oils. So those oils that you see at the grocery store or at TJ Maxx, where you can get 10 for $30 with a diffuser, I mean, it's insane. But those are not pure. They can say 100% pure, but most of the time, 99% of the time, they are filled with synthetic synthetics, toxic chemicals, just things that are not good for us to be inhaling or diffusing or even worse, like ingesting, right? So this is what, what sets doTERRA apart is their transparency and they make it um, available to us too. It's at our fingertips. We can go online um, on a source to you and we enter the small little number that each bottle has. It's a unique number to each oil and you can um, enter it in and really see all the testing that doTERRA does to make sure that they are 100% pure and that wild orange is the only ingredient in this bottle, right? Uh, so I was, Firsthand, I, I um, felt the therapeutic effects of balance and wild orange, but what really kept me with doTERRA and what really makes me proud to be part of doTERRA has been, obviously we talked about their transparency, the third party testing, but just as important is their co-impact sourcing. So doTERRA actually, loves to pour back into the world, right? Um, they source their oils in over 40 different countries and most of them are undeveloped countries. They really pour into their farmers. They, they, uh, they really care about 
you know, these, these people that are nurturing their lands, their soil, they're experts in that, right? So why, so doTERRA likes to pour into them and really treat them fairly and ethically. And also their Healing Hands Foundation, um, where they're giving back to communities, they're providing education, providing clean water. This is what really, I just love, love doTERRA being part of them for these reasons. And now we're gonna talk about the three ways to use essential oils. The first one being aromatically. So this is usually um, most commonly known as like diffusing it with your diffuser, or you can take an oil, put a couple drops and just inhale directly. And this will calm emotions, boost mood and energy, opens airways. Another way to use them would be topically, which would be like in a roller. You can apply it directly to the area that you need that, you know, um, for pain, for inflammation, for discomfort, you can put it in, um, use it for like, if you're feeling anxious, you can put it in your pulse points and back of your neck. Um, and the third way would be internally, which um, would be in like capsule forms. I actually took this one before our class, um, adaptive capsules, just to help me calm myself a little bit. <laughs> um, and let's see the next slide, please. And why we use carrier oils. So carrier oils, um, we use because some of the oils are like hot oils, like oregano, you don't want to put on your skin directly because you can have a reaction. It's, it, it can burn. Um, so you want to use a carrier oil for that. And the, the most common is fractionated coconut oil, but you can use different oils for different reasons. Like for my face, I usually use jojoba oil, but you can use grape seed. You can use, um, emu oil, rose hip, and it, it does not affect the, it does not change the effectiveness of the oil diluting it. Yeah, I'll just add to that. She, she, uh, Jessica's exactly right. As far as um, some oils you particularly want to dilute, like she said, because they're hot oils. Also, oils are volatile compounds, right? So when you put an oil undilute on your skin, it's called NEAT, N-E-A-T. I'll do that with like lavender. If you've ever burned your finger, we'll talk about lavender, amazing for burns. I'll just put a couple drops undiluted. But by and for the most part, you're gonna dilute your oils, deuterium even cells like, you know, pre-diluted, ready to rock and roll, you know, roller bottles. But the other thing that it does, not only do you like, conserve your oil. They're very concentrated, like Jessica talked about at the beginning of the, you know, class, how like, you know, one drop of peppermint oil and the 28 cups of peppermint tea. If you take that drop of peppermint oil, instead of having a tiny drop in a small surface area on your skin, you can add it to some carrier oil and you actually spread it out over the surface area of your skin. And so you're actually increasing like the absorption surface area and it helps it to not evaporate as quickly. So it sometimes depends on what you're using it for, but that's just another benefit of carrier oils. Um, anyways. And some safety with oils, you would never want to use them in our nose, in our ears, um, in our eyes. Be mindful of hot oils. Like I said, oregano is a hot oil, deep blue is a hot oil, photosensitive oils, more of our citrus oils. Um, look for supplement facts before ingesting, talking about doTERRA only. Um, use stainless steel or glass. And when in doubt, always dilute. So now we're gonna jump into the most popular oils that we use in our medicine cabinet. The first being frankincense. And this is absolutely my favorite oil. I think it's a must for everyone. I, it's called the king of oils for a reason. It's super versatile. Um, I think when in doubt, always use frankincense because it's, always, it's good for so many things, right? A lot of benefits inflammation, um, healthy cell growth, anti-cancer. It's in our sick blend. Um, we use a roller called, um, the acronyms are FLUT. Um, so frankincense being the, the F um, in that, uh, and we can go into that a little later, but um, 
It's also great for joint and muscle blends and obviously so good for skin. It's one of the oils that I put in my glow serum. And honestly, frankincense has helped me tremendously um, emotional, emotionally. It is a very grounding for me. I just, the way I use it, I use it every day, like a couple times a day. I will put a couple drops in my hand and just inhale directly, take some deep breaths. And it truly just, I don't know, it just calms me. It really is everything and I can't live without it. <laughs> um, also, um, when I have like tension headaches, I'll put a couple drops on my thumb and just put it in the roof of my mouth. And I'll, I'll probably re repeat it maybe like every 10 minutes until my headache is done, is, is gone. And it works amazing for that. I was talking to Lauren and she had mentioned you want to talk about your friend? Oh, who, yeah. I don't yeah. personally suffer from migraines, but I have a nurse friend and customer that does, and she would get really bad migraines, and she had tried a bunch of things, and she was like, man, I was having to call out sick or leave my shifts early, and, you know, between that and having a couple kids, she was like, how many, how often can I call out sick? <laughs> like, um, so anyway, she added, um, started doing exactly that, putting frankincense. Um, you can, some people do it under the tongue, some people for migraine specifically, like Jessica described, put it on the roof of your mouth. Like it's, it's kind of like the most straight gateway um, to like get into your system. And same thing, she's like, I'd have to repeat it a couple of times, but it would totally nip my migraine, you know, right away. Cause it's a potent anti-inflammatory. So anyways, that's, I, I've had multiple people kind of do that before. Um, I'll have someone say, okay, go ahead. I have someone saying they are trying to get on. So I'm gonna see if I can, there's anyone. Okay. Um, the next one would be tea tree. And, um, this is also known as melaleuca and this is great for all things skin, right? It's healing, cleansing. Um, it's great for like, if you have some acne, you can use it as a spot treatment, but it's great also for like cuts, scrapes, um, as it's antibacterial, antifungal. Um, I, my son was like pulling on his ear the other day and he was a little fussy and I just didn't know if, if he had like an earache. So I grabbed my tea tree, um, pre-diluted already. And I just rolled it like, or not in his ear, but around his ear, the ear muscles and, um, the ear bones, I'm sorry. And then I also just grabbed lavender because it's soothing. And then he completely stopped. He was better, stopped fussing. So it really works great for ear aches as well. Um, but it's good for eczema. I mean, tea tree is, is a staple too in our medicine cabinet. I, I reach for this all the time. Um, it's in our um, flute roller that I was mentioning with frankincense. Um, great for the immune system. Lauren, do you want to change the slide? Thanks. Uh, then lavender, right? Everyone is familiar with lavender. This is such a versatile oil as well. It's known as the calming oil, great for sleep, but also great for mood. It helps with anxiety, um, great for skin as well. It's in my glow serum. <laughs> um, it's it helps with headaches. I use lavender frankincense as well in a roller with, um, it's frankincense, lavender, and peppermint that I use for my headache roller. And that works great. I use it for allergies along with peppermint and lemon. And that has helped as well. I will just roll it like over my sinuses and, um, Let's see what else. Oh, fever. I use, I use lavender and peppermint in a roller. Um, when my kids have a fever, I roll it on their, their foreheads, the, their backs on their spine on the bottom of the feet. And that has like saved us. It, I don't use Tylenol that often. Um, lavender and peppermint is gold. <laughs> And these are just some testimonials. Um, you know, they talk about how frankincense has helped with migraines, like Lauren mentioned, tea tree for, for skin, um, and then all the things with lavender. Yeah, and do you want to take over, Lauren, yeah. now? Okay. Yeah. 
Perfect. Thanks so much. So, okay. So peppermint is like next on our list of some of the most popular oils. So this is like an all purpose oil. It definitely is a cooling oil. We talked about how oregano referred to other oils as hot oils. This is a cooling oil. You definitely feel the coolness when you um, apply it. It's really great for headaches, um, head tension. You put it on like, you know, the temples of your head and kind of like the back at the base of your skull. Um, it's re also really good. It kind of works on, you know, many different body systems. So really great for respiratory support, opening up the airways, really good for digest digestive and oral health um, and cooling down the body, whether it's, you know, you're in a hot environment or you have a fever or something like that, you know, rolling it down the spine or, you know, again, kind of the back of the neck is great for cooling. Um, and then it's also, I don't know if it's on here or not. Oh, it is on the the little side part. It is a great bug repellent, just FYI. Like ants in the summer that are like crawling in, you just put like a couple drops wherever they are on your counter, out the outside of your house. You don't need to spray Raid or whatever other like chemical concoction that you don't want in your environment or near pets and kids. You just put a couple drops of peppermint and, um, I just had a friend move to Oklahoma. I think she said it worked for, I don't know, some other big critter they had there, if it was like spiders or something else. So just uh, bugs in general, it's a great like insect repellent for um, that as well. And then lemon is like all things cleansing oil. It's cleansing for the environment. It's cleansing for you. And so it's great for like cleaning products. If anyone's ever, um, you know, left like hashtag mom life you know you forget about the uh, laundry in your washer for a day and it has that funky smell you rewash it with a couple drops of uh lemon it's great it's a natural gooby gone and so you know those stickers from like um home goods or whatever those tags that you can never get off you just put a couple drops of lemon on and it peels right off kids right on your wall with sharpie lemon oil i mean you can just kind of put it on everything and then as far as like the health benefits um it's also cleansing for you citrus oils um in general but lemon included are um high in a component called limonene and it's great for boot that is good for boosting glutathione which is your body's master antioxidant and so that's sort of the mechanism for why it's a good um detoxifier so even if you just um you know like have a big glass of water or a big water bottle that's stainless steel you can add a couple drops um to your water you know every time this is why i say every time you refill that liter water bottle just add a couple drops of your favorite citrus oil lemon being one of them um um, it's great. I've done this, added it to salad dressings or um, mix it with a little spoonful of um, honey um, for a sore throat um, for the immune benefits. And then oregano is the next one. Okay, this one, I'm going to just be honest with you. It does not smell great. So no one like busts out their oregano and it's like, you know, I'm going to diffuse some oregano today. Like, um, that's not what you're going to use it for. But it's sort of like the natural antibiotic um, of essential oil. So it's a very effective, um, it's been shown to be more powerful than penicillin in a lot of ways. It's great for like um, any type of fungal or warts or anything like that. It's also really great if you feel like you have some sort of cough, cold, congestion, you're, you know, coming down with something and putting it um, in a veggie cap. Um, that's one way you can take them aromatically. You just pop that cap open and then you can put a couple drops of some of immune supporting oils, oregano, lemon, frankincense, which Jessica talked about. I'll talk about On Guard in a little bit. That's like another immune support blend. Like I put all those in a veggie cap and take those um, twice a day if I feel like I'm under the weather or if someone in my house is sick and I don't want to get it. Um, and I swear by it. Like my husband loves oils. He uses oils. He cannot for the life of him, go make himself a veggie cap. He'll get the diffuser going. He'll do a roller. He cannot. And he's the one that gets sick and I don't. And I don't feel sorry for him because I just tell him, go make a roller. Everything's right there. So that is like, I swear. Uh, absolutely swear by it. But we do say like, this isn't going to be some of the other ones we've talked about. Those are going to be daily drivers. Like you're going to use them, you know, repeatedly. Oregano is kind of one of those ones you're going to pull off the shelf when you have something kind of acute or episodic rather than kind of like um, daily driver kind of thing. Um, let's see. And then um, these are just some testimonials about that. One of the biggest ones, yes, yeah, someone's talking about how they used it for mastitis. Again, think like natural antibiotic immune boosting, but it's got a lot of the properties. We also, um, 
talked about, you know, the, some of the properties of essential oils, they're lipophilic like us, like our cell membranes. And so they can cross our cell membranes and that's where viruses replicate, right? They replicate inside. So it works well for bacteria and viruses, which is like a big benefit for like colds and flus and other things. Okay. Um, on guard. Um, so this is a blend of oils that has like clove and wild orange and eucalyptus. It's a blend um, and is uh, called the protective blend because it's meant to act, you know, um, to help boost your immune system, also have antiviral and antibacterial properties. And so this is one that is, I, you know, I clean my kitchen counters with it and I put it in a, a drop in a veggie cap when I, again, when I feel like I'm, um, I'm you know, either don't want to get under the weather or someone in my house is under the weather or I feel something coming on. I actually went to a nurses and essential oil conference um, in Salt Lake City a couple years ago. And um, I went with another nurse uh, friend of mine. And anyways, the nurses actually presented like the different, um, this life cycle of like viruses. And they were saying with essential oils, and I've noticed this for myself to be true, but they actually presented the research that uh, matched my experience. If you feel you have a cold coming on or, you know, fill in the blank, it, they work best in the replication cycle if you take it at the very onset. Once you kind of set up your symptoms and kind of stuff, it's, it's not that it's, it won't help, but you'll really kind of notice that, wow, I really thought I was going to get sick. And then I kind of did, you know, did my things that I know to help and really, um, you know, ended up not getting sick. So really great for daily immune support. I recommend, you know, if you fly or travel or are, you know, in any sort of like contact with, you know, like large groups of people, roll some on guard down your spine or take a drop in a veggie cap for kids, you know, put it down their spine and their feet. Also really great for cleaning. Um, so they have a whole, doTERRA has a whole on guard line. So there's the actual essential oil, but there's, I have everything in the line. I have the toothpaste cause it's, it has clove in it, which is great for oral health. Um, I have the hand sanitizer spray. I just take that, you know, when my kids were little, you know, they dropped their pacifier, just squirt off their pacifier and then wipe it with one of those water wipes. Um, so, and then what, but what I like about it is it's highly effective, but it's completely non-toxic. In fact, it's immune boosting. So you're not slathering yourself in, um, oh gosh, why am I, trickle sand? I think they banned trickle sand from the market, but you know, that used to be like the main, like antibacterial, you know, ingredients. You're not putting synthetics, endocrine disrupting uh, chemicals on your skin or, you know, in your body, but you're actually doing things that are good for yourself. So that's what I like. And you can also diffuse it and it will help cleanse the air. So you can use it in basically every, capacity. Breathe. This is the respiratory blend. blend. Um, it has peppermint in it, but it has, you know, eucalyptus, tea tree, cardamom. This is all things respiratory. So if you're congested, um, like for asthma, asthma, you could take, um, cause asthma is kind of an inflammatory condition or isn't inflammatory. You can take some breathe and a couple drops of frankincense. Um, and I love to put a couple drops in a steamy shower, you know, after a workout, or if my kids were, you know, are sick, or especially when they were little, little, and you cannot get them to like blow their nose because they're just too little to kind of, you know, be able to do that. I would take them in a steamy sh shower, get, you know, all the um, warm moisture to loosen, loosen everything up, but then I would add breathe and it would just kind of open everything up. And then I would, you know, put some on their chest and the bottoms of their feet and then put those footy pajamas on and then they would sleep so well. This was another one, um, that was kind of converted me to oils. It was before I'd kind of really started, you know, changing over my lifestyle to more natural solutions. And I had gone to, my daughter was less than two, went to the drug the grocery store because she was congested and I was just looking for something to kind of help her decongest and everything on the back was like two and up, two and up, two and up. There was nothing. And I remember all, you know, some mom friends saying, you have to use breathe. Like it's a must. And I did. I, so I got some, I put it on it, just everything opened up and she slept amazing. So this is like a great one. It's also really good for anxiety um, or it can be or sleep. If you think about it, because breathing and your central nervous system are tied. So um, sometimes this is going to be a great one for sleep as well. Um, digest Zen. Um, this is another one. The smell is not my favorite. It's a you love it or you hate it. It smells like black licorice. So if you like the smell of black licorice, 
you'll love this. If you don't, you won't. But I still really like it for the therapeutic effects. It's still one of our like foundation oils in our home. You can basically use it for anything digest digestive. I had one nurse friend of mine and customer, she was like, that that digestive zen oil, it's like the unicorn oil because you can take it if you're constipated or if you have diarrhea. Like it doesn't matter what end of the spectrum or you have, you can take some and it works fast. Um, so, cause it's just gonna bring you back into homeostasis and it's soothing for the digestive tract. So um, you can roll it on your belly, um, diluted. Um, it's actually also really good because if you think about it like the mucous membranes in your gut, the mucous membranes in your sinuses, you know, it's similar. So it's actually also good for um, like sinus congestion. Some people actually roll it over like the sinuses, um, like, you know, kind of on these sinuses right here, it can be helpful. Um, you can also put it in a veggie cap um, if you don't like the taste. Although I feel like if you have heartburn, that sensation of, you know, some sort of reflux, putting a couple drops in like four ounces of water and chugging it is more soothing because you kind of get that coated lining versus, you know, just putting it in a veggie cap. Um, and then um, there's some testimonials here about people's experiences um, just with on guard. Like one gal here was saying, oh, her son was starting daycare as she was ending maternity leave. And she was like, roll on guard down his spine and spray his toys, you know, off with the sanitizer. Um, lots of different experiences here. Okay, deep blue. This is what I call the husband oil because this is usually what converts the husband. So deep blue, think like a natural icy hot. And so it definitely has like that wintergreen, you know, kind of menthol feeling to it. It also has some other really beautiful oils in it, um, like blue tansy, um, I believe. Now I don't want to make it up. I thought it has, um, yeah, it does have helichrysum in it. I want to make sure it has helichrysum in it. I mean, some really um, great soothing anti-inflammatory oils. So, um, it's a really great anti-inflammatory and for pain when I was pregnant, this was like my lifesaver for like my lower back, um, working 12 hour shifts, you know, with uh, a pregnant belly at the hospital, I would put deep blue on a lot, or if you have any sort of sports injury or anything like that, um, putting some deep blue on it. And then I like to put like a heating pad or a, like a, I take a sock, like a long sock and I fill it with rice and then you tie a, a knot on the end. So it all stays in. And then you can, we have a microwave in our house. We don't really use it for anything. I use it to disinfect my sponges and to heat up this sock if I ever need it. But, um, this rice sock, you do it for like two minutes, a minute and a half, and it will warm up and it acts like a heat pad. So you put your, um, or you could do a heating pad and you just do, um, you know, some layer on some deep blue and then put that heat on, it really drives in the oils. Um, if you just have other kinds of pain, it's great to combine with um, like copaiba and lemongrass. Um, this is not one that you ingest. So we talked about how you can take doTERRA oils internally. That is true. There are certain oils though, or certain plant extracts that are just not intended for internal use. Um, and like Jessica said, if you turn it over, it'll say supplement facts on the bottle if it's intended for um, oral consumption. This does not have that on there. And because they extra don't want you to take deep blue because it has wintergreen in it. It has like a um, large childproof cap. So that's like another just tip if you have your oils and you're like wondering if you can. So um, someone says deep blue is everything, chronic back pain, sciatica, kids growing pains. It's like the best. I have to agree. Um, anything sore muscles, aches, pains, really, really great. Um, Let's see. Okay. Adaptive. So some of the, all the oils we've talked about up until now have been like, I want to say with doTERRA since the beginning of the company, doTERRA is one of, or adaptive is one of the, you know, in comparison, one of the newer oils and it can really be turned like coined the mental health blend. Um, so it has citrus, um, like wild orange, lavender, um, magnolia, copaiba. Um, it just smells really beautiful. My absolute personal favorite way to use copaiba is in Epsom salt baths. So I will take like unscented Epsom salts. I add a couple drops of, you know, um, you know, two, three, four drops of adaptive to the Epsom salts, put them in the bath. And um, particularly when I'm giving my kids a bath, you know, it chills them out, it chills me out because I'm smelling the bath that they're taking. Um, but it's so good and relaxing in a bath. You can put it in a diffuser, on diffuser, um, jewelry. Um, some people like to add like a little additional citrus, you know, if you're making a diffuser blend, maybe 
couple drops of this and a couple drops of say grapefruit or something like that. Um, but really great for just stress overall and mental health. Lots of people, this is sort of one of those, it's almost has like a cult following of this oil. Some people, when this got released, some people, this became like their oil. Um, so their go-to oil. Copaiba, this is, um, sort of like this CBD of essential oils. I actually, at one of the conventions, got to listen to Dr. Hill um, talk about, he gave like, I don't know, it was like an hour lecture. Like we all got up early, you know, um, it was like a bonus session to hear him talk about Copaiba and how it directly, like the pathway that it follows for um, their CB1 and CB2 receptors. And this follows the CB2 and in the direct pathway. It's like, actually when he broke it down through the pathway, it's like more direct on the receptors than actual CBD because of how it works. So it's really great for the immune system. It's also good for um, calming and stress. It's good for skin, sore muscles and increasing the immune system. So sort of like frankincense, frankincense, excuse me. If you pick copaiba, you can't go wrong. In fact, a lot of people will use frankincense and copaiba like together, um, whether it's, you know, under your tongue or in a veggie cap for cellular support, immune function, calming, all the things they, they work really well together. Um, the other thing I like about copaiba, kind of like frankincense, it's a pretty mild smell. And so kind of earthy, but kind of, but definitely it's not like a pungent oil. So I like it because it blends really nice with just whatever else you're using. So you can kind of easily sneak it into like, you know, whatever you want to put in your diffuser for sleep. You can easily put in a couple drops of copaiba or my favorite is just a couple drops of copaiba underneath your tongue before bed. You'll sleep like a baby. Um, balance. That was one that Jessica talked about. That was kind of one of her converter oils. This is a great, another one that's great for mood, um, and calming. I actually keep this in my work bag. Um, and so like on my, you know, on my break, I usually, you know, splash a couple drops of balance, you know, behind my neck. Um, if I'm in a place where my hair's down, I love to run oils through my hair, like citrus oils or balance in addition to putting on my skin, because then you sort of get like a diffuser effect from your hair. So this one um, is like another really popular one. Um, it, ha it has frankincense in it and blue tansy, and then it has osmanthus in it as well, which is one of my favorite smelling um, oils. And it all, this one blends really well with citrus oil. So wild orange, citrus bliss, grapefruit, those are like some of my favorite ones to combine with balance. Um, Let's see. Oh, someone said they do copaiba, frankincense, yarrow palm to their nighttime routine. That's like someone's talking about copaiba. Um, someone else talking about the copaiba and frankincense under your tongue. That's a, That really is a good one. Um, let's see. Lots of people saying they do copaiba under their tongue. Um, okay, so those are kind of, there's obviously lots of oils. Those are like, I would say, you know, some of the most popular oils um, and blends. Um, something else I just want to talk about, if you're not new to oils, you probably already know we have a private essential oil community. This is um, just really an invaluable resource. I actually, before we hopped on, just had to open up um, the Obsessed with Essentials. That's the name of the Facebook group that we have and the Obsessed with Essentials team. There's a website. I know not everyone has Facebook or has gotten rid of Facebook, but um, I actually had to look up. I'm like, how many members are we up to? Because I feel like when I first started teaching class, it was like, oh, we have like 2,000 members and it was 3,000. Now we're like four and a half, you know, approaching 5,000, you know, people in the Facebook group. So it's a very active group and there's so many resources and support. So we have, um, ebooks, dilution charts, webinars. Um, the other thing is there's lots of posts that you can just search by topic. So if you type in sleep to the search bar on the Facebook group, all these posts on sleep will come up and all the comments that people have, you know, that of people's experiences and wisdoms that you can follow on the thread. Um, of course, if you have something and you don't see anything when you you know, um, type anything in the search bar, you can just go in and just ask a question. People are happy to hop on and share their experiences and stuff like that. That's honestly, that's one way that I've been able to help customers of mine. I remember I had someone that had, um, oh gosh, uh, 
plantar fasciitis. And I hadn't helped anyone with that. I looked at my book, but like through our group, I found what had worked for other people. I'm like, so I told my customer, I'm like, well, let's try this. And it worked amazing. So there's just a lot of wisdom that you can get from, you know, kind of brushing up against other people's um, experiences. These are just some pictures of our eBooks. We have green cleaning, um, oils for baby, winter wellness. I mean, there's all sorts of um, ones. And then the other thing I love are these resources. We have dilution charts, um, diffuser recipes, you know, all any sort of resource you could possibly imagine um, we have that just make it really easy to use your oils because the oils can be great, but if they sit in your cabinet, you know, they're not going to, you're not going to get to experience um, the benefits of the oils. So anyways, um, so there's a lot of perks in getting started if you haven't already. So I know many of you already are. I'll talk about some things just specifically for you that you might want to look at. But um, you know, if you do, if you haven't gotten started with oils and you're thinking you want to, um, I'm gonna refer you back. Whoever invited you to this webinar, you know, reach out to them and they will help you get started um, and you know can kind of help finish answering any questions. But just to give you an overview, um, you can just purchase a wholesale membership that's like. Um, it's a $35 membership. You don't get auto enrolled, you know, um, kind of like um, a Costco membership and you get wholesale pricing for the year, but it's not going to auto enroll you. We always recommend if you haven't gotten started yet that you get started with a kit simply because when the oils are bun bundled together, you get a deeper discount and they waive the enrollment fee. So, and you get the, the and it includes the wholesale membership. So, um, there's the Healthy Start Kit that really talks about what I call the top 10 oils. I think I'm looking, we talked about all those oils today. Um, and it's kind of like a little sampler kit because it gives you five, five ml bottles and um, a diffuser. And then um, the Healthy Essentials Kit um, is the version of the kit. They didn't have this kit when I started, but this is like the comparable kit. To be honest, I wish they had this kit because I wanted balance when I got started. They didn't have Copaiba yet, um, but these are some great foundation oils, but they give you the larger bottles. So these are the 15 ml bottles and the diffuser. Um, it's $249 for um, tax and shipping. It's like tax and shipping. Um, the other one's $160. So there's definitely a price difference, but I always, you know, tell people, you know, go with what works for your budget. But if your budget allows the second one, is um, like three times the oil for less than double the cost. So I feel like it is a, you know, just value wise, it is a better fit. And you get um, some of the mood support oils. It has balance, um, it has adaptive. So I like that too. Um, and then there's other kits too. There's a healthy habits kit. We didn't cover the vitamins um, and the PB assist and the tyrosine. Those are for gut support. And then the vitamins are one of my favorite products, and it's actually doTERRA's number one selling product. Everyone thinks, you know, an essential oil company, understandably, would their most popular product or best selling product would be their oils, but it's actually this vitamin pack. So that's what we take in our home. Um, and they're really high quality vitamins. So, anyways, if you're looking more to lean into nutrition and gut health, that might be a way to go. And then you can also always do a customizable kit. You can start with a basic kit and you could always add on stuff that's kind of specific to what you want to focus on. Um, and then always we want to welcome you in. And so it's always a little different for everyone. So I don't want to say exactly what your welcome, you know, gift would be because um, it'll be a little bit different, but usually like um, roller bottles and cute roller accessories and stuff like that usually, but again, talk with the person, ask them what they're offering this month. And I'm sure they'll be happy to tell you. So, um, Let's see, there's also the aroma essentials. There's another aroma kit. So if you're looking more into diffusing, that would be a great one. But what I do want to highlight are these wellness bottle, uh, wellness bundles, because I think the bulk of you on tonight, at least when I last looked at the chat, there might've been people that added to it since. Um, it seemed like you were familiar with oils, you had a kit or that sort of thing. doTERRA has launched these new wellness uh, bundles. So you can basically pick your track. So like if someone said sleep, respiratory, immunity, like pain relief or mind and mood, if you think of those categories, like which one jumps out at you, like you probably know like, oh man, I wanna sleep, like sleep's at the top of mind or stress management or whatever. So um, what you do is you kind of pick like which area you wanna focus on the most. So let's say, um, it's your immune system. So you would, you go into, um, if you're the monthly ordering program, if you're opting into that and you, you order the immune kit. Um, 
And that month, it will send you this already bundled um, immune kit, all stuff that focuses on immune health, on guard products, um, stuff like that. Then the next month, it sends you another bundle all geared towards immune, but it's something different. And then the next month, it's also under the immune umbrella, but it's also something um, different. Some of the things you can buy, some things you can really only get through that kit. And they put them together so that you don't have to like think of like, okay, what do I need for immune? The whole idea is that it's automated, just wellness, health is automated and coming to your doorstep. I think, so if you come here, this is kind of like, I don't know if you, how well you can see on the screen, but if you do go on the website, it will show you like if you pick immunity, like that first one up there is the first one that comes in that first kit. The second one for immunity, you know, you get like the mouthwash, you get a tongue scraper, you know, all uh, kind of some additional goodies that, you know, you wouldn't normally see on their website. And then same thing for all the other tracks. So. I really love those um, and it just makes them um, very easy to use. And then if you wanna focus on something next, you know, after you get three months, you can um, switch over to another track, you can cancel or it'll just start over, you know, cause the idea is you'll probably, you know, already used up your hand sanitizer or whatever by the time it's time for a new one. So those are really great to check out if you're kind of wanting to dive, you know, a little bit more into a focused area on your health. So, um, Let's see what time is. I want to be respectful of your time. Oh, we made it, Jessica. We stayed under an hour. That's what we said. We're like, we got to stay under an hour. So um, <laughs> let me, I'm going to um, see if I can exit my screen. And then I'm just going to go back to your comments um, when you first came on and just see if there's anything um, that I can answer. Let's see. And if you have questions, let's see, where's the chat? Um, if you have questions, or comments that weren't already in the chat and you wanna unmute yourself or you wanna post a question in the chat, I'm happy to you know, stay on. So let's see. Do you see Jessica? Let's see where- At the bottom, you wanna go to- Oh, uh, let's see. Yeah, I just opened it okay. up. I think that's what it was. Okay, perfect. And you can hop in too. Um, okay, so someone said, okay use some someone else they said they'd use some okay and then as far as um let's see i'm gonna send um for uh for sleep and uh there is someone was talking about sleep um one one uh that i really like is called um Clair clary calm that's a blend that's a great one for hormones so if you're having any sort of menopause symptoms um pms anything like that and it smells so incredibly calming so um i love um very calm. So any sort of hormone balance, that's like one of my key ones to go to. And then the other thing, kind of like we talked about, I love copaiba under the tongue. I also really love the serenity soft gels. So, um, it has L-theanine in it. Um, it has lavender and I'm, uh, a couple other things that I'm like, I think, oh, it's lemon balm and it. it has some really great calming stuff. So those I love, and I feel like with sleep too, everyone, you know, kind of what's your, special sleep cocktail might be a little different for you than it is your husband or someone else, but those are really great. Copaiba under the tongue, the Serenity soft gels. And then if you're having like- Or the Copaiba um, soft gels too. I know oh, my yes. mom, yeah, my mom, she used to be on medication to sleep. She has some anxiety too. And she really did not like how she felt the next day. It was that grogginess feeling. It was just hard to function. So I actually said like, mom, here, try Serenity. And we paired it with Copaiba. And she is like, I'm never taking those, that medication anymore. Like she didn't feel that grogginess and she slept. The quality of her sleep was everything to her because she hadn't slept like that in a, in a while, in a long yeah. time, actually. And then peppermint um, for cooling. If you're having any sort of like kind of night sweats, it's very like, good. Clary Calm, you mentioned, right? Yeah, um, also Clary just Calm. Clary, Clary Sage, just smelling it. I know that has helped some people with night sweats. Um, but Clary, it's it's in Clary Calm, so I guess that would. Oh be my gosh, Jenna saying she loves oregano. She's still on. Let's see. 
All right. Well, Jenna loves oregano. I guess I shouldn't speak for all. It's not my favorite, but um, yeah, it, it's pretty strong. But you know, to each their to each their own. Um, and then right out of the bottle, it smells amazing. Okay. I can't. <laughs> not oregano, yes. Jenna. I'm like turning everyone off to it. Well, I just want people to be braced themselves when they open that bottle like if you ever do not put it in the diffuser i mean i'll okay, give you that, that. Do yeah. not. <laughs> okay good <laughs> um okay someone's saying um oh someone just said they did copaiba and serenity yeah. and sleeping like a baby okay that's that's great to hear so yeah people are saying similar things and then Someone saying, Avid, you would love to hear about root cause and gut health because it isn't talked about ever. I mean, I could touch on it. I feel like that is a whole yeah. juicy topic and probably a whole nother webinar. That's uh, another class we can do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, you want to know why it isn't talked about or top three things for gut health? What would you do? That kind of thing. What's your opinion? What do you want to talk about? What do you have to say about it? Should it be talked about more? Is this something that we should really be looking at? I mean, I kind of feel the more and more I've just done my own research, I feel like the gut is just the, is basically the root cause. Yeah. An unhealthy gut is the root cause of all disease and all dysfunction. And yet yeah, I've never had a doctor disease. mention it. Yeah. Begins in the gut. I think, you know, it's one of those things like those people who have been kind of looking into natural health for a long time have been screaming gut health, gut health, gut health. And I feel like it's just been recently that mainstream, they have so far to go, but they're like starting to recognize like, Oh, you know, I will actually see at our hospital, they will put patients on probiotics when they're getting antibiotics in the hospital to help prevent C. diff. Now that's not exactly like just saying, oh, they've got gut health figured out, but they are like acknowledging like there is a component like versus like, you know, when I was a kid, I don't feel like there was any second thought to like giving around of antibiotics and thinking about what the impact is on, you know, gut flora and that sort of thing. So I did learn in nursing school and I feel like it's probably even more than this, but I remember covering a nursing school, I don't know, it was a research class they had to take, but they were saying it takes, and I th even think this is conservative, I, they said it takes 10 years before research like comes, comes out, 10 years before it actually gets implemented into practice. And I think there still might even be a difference. I think that I think that's being optimistic, um, but you know there's definitely a lag time between recognizing stuff um, and then things actually you know showing up in clinical practice. I also think, by and large, Western medicine just isn't trained to look for a root cause or look. To, it's diet, it's disease by symptom, not disease by cause, and so that's not really the way it goes. I will say I dealt with eczema for a long time not a long time. I didn't for a long, for, I didn't have it my whole life. And then it showed up, um, in my life kind of really vengeful. And I did a lot of work on my gut health and with, um, you know, doing bone broth and, you know, all the things that you do and fats and stuff that really feed my and nourish my gut, I was able to reverse it. Um, but it's not really talked about. And if I had just gone the straight mainstream route, they would have just given me steroid cream until, you know, for forever. So, um, it definitely is, it's not nearly as recognized. I feel like there's starting to be like glimmers of it, but that it's like be it's accepted that it does play a role, but nowhere near where I think it needs to be. Thank you for sharing. I feel like even with mental health, it's like, yeah. it starts in the gut, like before yeah. you go. Well, now they're the calling it like yes. feel your gut. Yeah. Now they're calling your, I mean, they're calling your gut the second brain, right? Because it's like, I think it's like 80% of your body serotonin is actually manufactured in your gut. So, um, anyways, yes, there is. Um, and I feel like one, I mean, there's a lot of obviously intricate things you can do and in, in to heal your gut, but one of the best things you can do is just eat whole foods. Don't eat a lot of sugar and processed food because you know, the good bacteria are going to feed off, you know, the good stuff, the bad bacteria and overgrowth, you know, feed off the bad stuff. If you can avoid having to do antibiotics, you know, that's always ideal. 
I also will say there's obviously a time and a place, but you just have to know it's going to come at a cost. I always pound if I have to take an antibiotic or give, you know, one of my kids antibiotics, which is, you know, my daughter went the first seven years of her life without having a single one. And, you know, my son has had it one time and, but I always give antibiotics during, or sorry, probiotics during the course of antibiotics. And then after I really like pound um, probiotics, cause you want to repopulate the gut with the good stuff. Does that completely counteract it? Probably not, but you cut, you do the best you can, like with what you have kind of thing. Um, and I think it takes like a year, doesn't it? Of like, really yeah, a year to two years focus. if ever, which is just heinous to think about. Oh. I mean, and I don't say that like as a, a fear, you know, to be fearful, but just mindful. So we will just really do, um, like, don't take it for a month and expect anything to happen. Like this is, you got to be on it. Especially yeah. You have to be it. on it. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, all the things like prebiotic fight, that's actually what I really like about doTERRA's probiotic. I will say I've, I've had a lot of people that I've, you know, kind of introduced that probiotic to, and I've had many people say like, I've taken a lot of probiotics in the day and none have affected me the way that one do. It's like a noticeable difference um, quickly. The LLV, the PBSist and the Terrazyme together, I feel like is a game changer for it gut It is a health. game changer. And the PBSist specifically is formulated. So it, it's, it almost looks like a little space pill because it's like a bright green and you can tell it's like double encapsulated. Mm -hmm. But that is one of the problems with probiotics is you take probiotics and they might be a really high quality probiotic, but the acid in your stomach lining, which you want acid in your stomach to digest your food, it can denature and inactivate the probiotic. So it's not actually getting to your small intestine and where it needs to go to really populate. But uh, doTERRA, it's like a patented, so it's double encapsulated. So there's that outer layer and that kind of gets burned off by your stomach acid, but that inner part actually gets to your intestine where it needs to go. And so it has a really high quality probiotic, but it also the green is chlorophyll and it's a prebiotic. So it's food for the good bacteria in your gut, as well as, you know, just a dose of, you know, um, of good bacteria. So I feel like that the delivery system is, uh, makes a big difference too. Okay. That's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. And I'm requesting a class on gut health. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> yeah, you, I guess you can put your, uh, oh man, I could, um, I could talk a long time about gut health. I don't know if people are. <laughs> Let's do it. I'll make you the presentation. Okay, I'll make you the presentation. I'll, you know, <laughs> I'll, uh, talk and talk and talk. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. I think we're good. Uh, do you guys have any other questions? Trying to look on the chat. Yeah, I think we're okay. Well, thanks everyone for coming um, and attending. And, um, you know, like I said, if you have questions, reach out to the person, whoever told you how to get to this webinar, just reach out to the person who invited you. Or um, we had our social media handles at the front. You can always send us a DM or something if you have a question. Um, thanks so much. I'm glad, um, Rachel, I'm glad you enjoyed it. And we're, uh, we'll look forward to seeing you at our, you know, to be determined gut health class that Jenna's going <laughs> to make slides for. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> All right. Good night, awesome class. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. On. Jessica, I just want to make sure we don't lose the recording. So I'm going to pause it. Is that, um,